The Canon EOS XT. How is it for portraits? Hey, what's up you guys? Nick here. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Nick. I'm a professional photographer. I've been shooting professionally for the last four years, though I've had a camera in my hand as a hobbyist for the last 17. And as you probably saw from the very beginning of this video, we are going to be talking about this Canon. Now, I have hinted about this Canon on several occasions for several, several, several months now, and I was actually able to finally go out and do a portrait shoot with it. This is one of the first Canons I had a lot of extensive use with. I played around with it a lot around my house before I actually went out and did the street photography with it and before I went and did the portrait shoot. Now, as you're seeing the B-roll and the photos picking up, you probably recognize the outfit in the model from last week's video when we did the Canon EOS Rebel T3, and I'll link that video right up there. And that is because when I went out and shot that video, we had a little bit of extra time, Jessica and I, and I decided that we would give this camera a try as a portrait camera. Now, this camera was lent to me by Nick, who you probably might remember from my photography interview video, and I'll link that down in the description. But this is a Canon EOX XT. I believe it is the first DSLR released by Canon. It is eight megapixels and it came out in 2005. It is comparable to the Nikon D50. And I will link the video to the Nikon D50 up there because we have a couple videos on that. Now on this camera, the entire shoot, I was using the Yongno 50 millimeter 1.8 lens and I'll link my video on that down in the description. I really am liking this lens. It's cheaper for Canon than it is for Nikon. And again, like I said in a previous video, I am starting to figure out the reason for that. The image quality is absolutely beautiful. It is a really sharp lens, does exactly as it's advertised, and mounted on this little guy here, it has taken some phenomenal images. Now, in last week's video, I did bring out this camera to com compare it to the Rebel EOS T3. And the big comparison I did is on the back. Now, this camera here, the Rebel EOS T3, it is a lot more user-friendly of a backing. As you can see, everything is on this side, all your menu buttons, all your options, and everything you need to use the camera one-handed. Whereas with this camera, it's kind of spread out. You got your menu buttons over here. You have your quick select like hotkeys over here. It's not as friendly as a one-handed camera as the Rebel T3 is. Still, it's a very fast camera. Now, before we jump too headlong into this video about the Canon EOS XT, let's talk about this Nikon N80. At a thousand subscribers, I am giving away one of my Nikon N80 35 millimeter film cameras. Now, as of recording this, we are one away from 750. The channel just continues to grow exponentially and it is absolutely amazing. So make sure you guys are subscribed and hit the bell notification. I release at least one video a week of this length. So let's get back into talking about that Canon. And what I mean by that is for a camera this old, it runs extremely quickly. I was able to put this on continuous shot and get some amazing action shots, which they might've showed up in the B-roll already, but I'm gonna pop those onto the screen really quick. As you can see, it is a really fast camera. It's able to process the images relatively quickly. And if I had a battery in it that wasn't dead, I would show you exactly how fast it shoots. And we will do an entire video on that when I go through and do my tutorial video on this camera. Now. Some of the things you do want to remember with this camera is it is much older. Batteries are relatively cheap. You can get them on Amazon for about $15 with a charger. The batteries are plentiful. The other thing about this camera is it uses the compact flash, which is bigger than the SD card that most modern DSLRs take. Now the compact flash is more reliable in my opinion. I've had better experiences with them lasting longer and not corrupting as easily as with the SD cards. But because of the age of this camera, it will not process anything over two gigabytes with my experience. I tried a four and a five gigabyte compact flash card with this camera and it would not process the images and kept giving me a card error. But with a two gigabyte one, you can take plenty of photos. I think on this shoot with Jessica, I took about 200 photos in the span of about 30, 35 minutes and we got some absolutely amazing shots. As you guys have probably seen as they pop up on the screen. With these general reviews, I always talk about the price of 
of the used camera, how well the images look, as well as how easy it is to get accessories or additional gear for it. Now this takes your standard EOS mount. So this lens right here works on this camera, it works on the Rebel T3 that I have, it'll work on a Rebel T7 and the much longer cameras, they all have that EOS mount. Now this camera right now, as of right this second on eBay, I found them for as low as $15. So for $15, you can get a DSLR that will take an EOS lens with cheap batteries and accessories that are still plentiful and easy to get a hold of that takes some amazing photos and runs relatively quickly. And because of that, you know, as a portrait camera for someone who's just getting into photography or someone who just wants an extra camera to practice with, I believe that the EOS X-T Canon is a nine out of 10. Now this scores more than most of my Nikons and so does the other Canon and that is because Canons are way more user friendly. The glass is a little bit cheaper and the used cameras are cheaper. A Nikon D50 still fetches $75 on eBay. A D70 still fetches between 75 and $100 on eBay. The 5100s are about 150 to 250 where I can get a Rebel T3 which is comparable to the Nikon D5100 for about $100 to $150. Uh, they came out the same year and their megapixel rate is rather similar. And again, as we've discussed in the past, and I'm gonna have a short about this later in the week, megapixels don't matter all that much unless you're really blowing your images up. So nine out of 10 is what I would give the EOS XT Rebel for a beginner photographer, someone who's just trying to find something to get into photography with. Um, let's say you have a teenager or a kid who wants to start learning photography with this lens right here. The lens here costs more than the camera. This lens is about $65. The camera, I think Nick said he got this for about $20. They're all over eBay for $15 to $25 eight megapixels, came out in 2005, so it's 16 years old, and it still takes such amazing photos. It was a lot of fun to go out there and play with a camera that, I have this weird affection with older DSLR cameras, older digital single lens reflex cameras. I don't know what it is about them. They just have a certain quality to them that I can't quite describe that I absolutely love. So I would definitely recommend this camera to anyone who is looking to get in on a budget, anyone who wants a practice camera, a camera for a kid to learn with, or if you're just trying to find a camera that you don't mind busting up on the hiking trail or walking around town with doing street photography. As a portrait camera, would I use this in a professional setting? Yeah, probably I would. This could be a backup for a backup for a backup, or even a backup for a backup. I wouldn't use this as my primary backup because my primary camera is a Nikon, and I want to be able to have that compatibility between two Nikons. But as a backup, if both other Nikons fail, absolutely. I would trust this camera to take some amazing photos because so far we've gotten some absolutely amazing and stunning photos with it so far. So yeah, I can honestly say, you know, Canons are starting to grow on me. I'm gonna have to add some more of these to my collection. I'm also looking at getting into Sony. So if you guys got any mirrorless recommendations for Sony, let me know down below. I figured since my channel covers a lot of photography related things for beginners or people on a budget and things like that, I think it's important for me to not just stick with one camera manufacturer, one camera brand. I need to branch out and really start playing with other manufacturers equipment and reviewing that for you guys because not all of you are shooting with Nikon. Some of you are shooting with Canon, some of you are shooting at Sony, some of you are shooting with Olympus, and for the ones I feel really sorry for are shooting with Fuji. I will not buy a Fuji, you guys. I'll rent one and we'll do some videos on a Fuji, but I'm not going to buy one. I'll buy Canons, I'll buy Olympics, I'll buy Nikons, and I'll buy Sonys, but I'm not going to buy a Fuji. And that's not just because my grandfather absolutely hates Fuji. There are reasons, but I will rent one and we will go and take it for a test drive. So let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions about this camera or any of the other cameras we've done videos on, or if you got a question about photography in general, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. I will answer your questions. I've done a number of videos answering people's questions, such as this short on setting custom white balance for a Nikon D70. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you guys know right when I upload. Again, I upload one full length video a week and I'm trying short 
shorts out. So far, I've been releasing two to three shorts a week as well. Just going over some general camera basics or photography questions that I get from you guys in the comments below. Thank you guys again so much for joining me. You have a wonderful afternoon, and I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye.